Sweat Equity Podcast and streaming show, the number one comedy slash business, business slash comedy podcast in the world. <laughs> Listen to us on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Um, we got Johnny LaQuasto, a uh, comedian, wrestler, announcer guy. Yeah. Looks That's like what they say under his name on a little thing. If you, third, he's got a special uh, Quasto special Q U A S T O special dot com. If you want to watch his special from 2018 that came out a year later, recently, lots of Ebola jokes, <laughs> lots of SARS humor. This is weird. Um, hey, thanks this, for making my joke not funny. <laughs> this episode, I thought you were going to pile on top of that one. This is why we're the best with <laughs> another disease. Yeah. Hey, lots of botulism, botulism humor. All right, this episode's brought to you by Squarespace, what? the all-one drag-and-drop content management system. You can make a website with no experience in website building. Uh, easy templates, easy to do, lots of resources to find out what you need to do when you're making a website. You got a little, you got a little cute shop. You make turquoise jewelry. You want to sell it online, have your own website? You got the e-commerce platform right there. You want to do email list straight out of the website platform? You can do it with their profile. Uh, yeah, Squarespace. don't let people tell you you can't do stuff with Squarespace. You can. You just have to learn how. Yeah, we might have to do. Uh, we might have to do another episode where we chew on uh, WordPress dorks. But uh, Squarespace can do anything the other content management systems can do, uh, aka WordPress, and it looks a little bit better. You don't need to uh, be a nerd or hire a bunch of nerds. You can do it with your two little paws. I agree. Link is in the description. Let's get it going with a little Doink the Clown. Howdy daddy! What about my sweat equity? Sweat equity. Sweat, 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 sweat equity. My sweat equity. My, my, my sweat equity. What about my sweat equity? We're good. We're good. Uh, we, is this a question? Is this a uh, video or audio for the most part? Oh, we do both. Okay. I want to make sure that my, my background doesn't look like I'm in my garage. You know, Johnny LaQuasto, I just slipped his, uh, his name in there real smooth like. Yeah. And then you talked about and then it. I talked about it. Um, mm -hmm. Why don't you uh, throw them your plugs, website, social, all that stuff? And then if you're watching on video, he looks like an evil version of this, this Johnny I knew growing up because of the That's goatee. Right. Oh, I am Wario cool Quasto at this point <laughs> with my goatee. So are we recording already? Uh -huh. That's my question. Yeah, what, where do people find you? We're going. We've already started. My yeah. God, we yeah. are sweating already. We're All inside right. you, man. Whew. He's All more right. inside us, me. but whatever. Yeah, yeah. Both wearing tank tops. I like it. It's hot as uh, shit. I don't know if you know that. You used to live in Florida. It is so goddamn hot. Plus, we're bros. I mean, that's what we do. Yeah. Bro out. Well, I like the fact the graphic behind you, you're both dressed like Pitbull. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. It is pretty sweet. That's a pretty well, that good, was, that's that's a pretty good one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, find me on uh, social media at Jay Quasto. That's J Q U. A S T O. Uh, that's pretty much every social media handle. Uh, Quasto.com. More importantly, right now, if you want to watch my special, uh, QuastoSpecial.com, you can click on a whole bunch of different ways to watch it. So, boom, there we go. Ooh, Quasto Special. So, uh, you were living in. All right, let's backtrack. We. Uh, yeah, wait. You guys know each other? Well, yeah. In LA, we were doing the <laughs> cool open mic circuit. In 06. Much, right? um, Good for your confidence. I yeah, moved up to L.A. when I was 21. You're not, you're maybe the same age, I think. Uh, I, I don't, I stopped counting to be honest. I mean, all I know is you and I both have bigger foreheads than when we met. So, <laughs> well, mine was going to happen. Um, <laughs> Open that dog at. We got a dog. Got a dog, dog on the loose. There you go. Barge right in. Out. Anyways. So, you, uh. Oh, I'm 38. Just turned 38. You you couldn't you can't be that much older if you are older than me. But you came out from Philly to LA, right? You pretty much, yeah. Pennsylvania to started off in Orange County, went to Long Beach, went to the South Bay, and then creeped up to Hollywood for probably about a decade, I'd say. And then you didn't remember the story. You we were doing a side splitters in Tampa a month ago or something like that. And you, I was trying to tell you the story. You don't remember this bad open micer. You know bad open mic guys. Like yeah, they got their thing. Like they got the one joke that maybe did well, 
<laughs> 12 years ago, mm-hmm. and they do it every time. And this one we used to do in Santa Monica was a guitar act. And all I can remember was uh, this guy that played the guitar, and he was just like, the only line I can remember was like, and you fuck your cat for Satan, or something like that. <laughs> and I, I said it to Johnny, he was like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah, right. And I was just like, what? Without any context, I mean, it's not comedically humorous. The guy was Are there you... every Monday in Santa Monica, at the, like Santa Monica, I want to say it was uh, like 14th Street-ish. Always uh, had a cat around his dick. Wait a minute, Are you, you're not talking Westwood Brew Co. Are you talking no. O'Brien's, yeah. the bar? That, yes, that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, O'Brien's was like the longest running something something comedy show on the west side like it was just every it had multiple bookers over the years but yeah i remember going to that uh, i you used to host remember. it dude that's that's uh, why I, I thought you were like i thought you ran it because i was so green no, and, uh, no I, would, I didn't know any i don't know you don't know anything when you're 21 yeah, yeah, yeah. and then like i remember i lived with brendan t gleason and i just remember it was on monday nights and like there's a shitty Monday Night Football game on. I was like, come on, we got to go. Let's go do this open mic. And he's like, I'm like, it's literally within two miles. We can get there in seven minutes. And he's Bro, like, Titans and Falcons. He's like, nah. And I was like, gotta what, see are, that. what are we doing out watch. here? I remember having this conversation. Like, what are we doing out here? Like, come on, let's go. Let, to this true. day, I'd rather watch Titans Falcons oh, than go to, no offense. For sure. Well, I guess that's pretty offensive. But like it was like one of those things where they're like, I'm the, f- he's, he was five years older than me. So I was like getting, in the, I'm like, dude, I, I'm the kid. I'm the kid in this place in this whole scenario, and I'm trying to get you to be my dad. Be, well, no, it's, it's funny going. you say that though. It, it's very, very easy to get lazy in a city like LA. Even though it, it, you wouldn't think so, because LA is supposed to be it's, it's the biggest the entertainment capital. Uh, yeah, okay, Vegas, but LA really, technically, the entertainment capital. You know, aside from maybe New York and of course Vegas. But it's easy to like Atlanta, kind of no, just keep throwing cities. Yeah, sure, there you go. Atlanta's <laughs> killing it. Natural. But it, it's easy to kind of like <laughs> Mexico City. It's easy to After lose that, hope. It's number six. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's easy to lose hope and kind of give up, but then come up with excuses as to why you're just chilling. Like you know, it, in the comedy scene, I know so many comics that I've known for so many years who have pretty much just hung out and have never really progressed. Like, yeah, they'll still do spots based off of relationships. But they're doing essentially the same shit (laughs) that they've been doing because they don't work. Me? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No. Totally. It's really – it's definitely – like stand-up just by itself, no matter what city, it's really easy to just not go because it's not fun. It's not fun to sit there. Like uh, it's not fun to just wait – when you're starting out, wait for an open mic. Um, And you just – Hope that somebody doesn't do your bit. Please yeah, don't do the thing I saw on the news last night. I mean, Eric, Eric's got a great uh, Roe versus Wade bit, and uh, you know he might burned it. <laughs> and it might be done, dude. I don't know. Uh, someone, uh, five comics, talked about it before he got up, and then it's not like, and then you can talk yourself out of it because you're like, well, this isn't like a real show. Yeah, this is mostly an abortion. Other, in L.A., at least over here, you know what, what's odd in um, in L.A. No open mic had anybody else but other comics. At least in some of the ones over in where we're at in the Tampa Bay area, there's some open mics that like I don't know what how, how bad your life is that you got to go sit at a booked open mic or something, but there's like an actual audience at, at the ones I frequent. Um, uh, when you were starting out, you were I remember you were wearing like a '76ers tracksuit too. Am I wrong or did I make that up in my head? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> In all likelihood, I was probably wearing something 76ers related. So, yeah, you're probably on point with that. No, because I was like, I can't pull that off. I can't get a heat a heat uh, tracksuit and pull that you off. You literally, you have an orange <laughs> Adidas tracksuit. Uh, that's right. <laughs> and it, and you pull it off. Uh, I'll give it to you. Hey, thanks. Um, kind of wanted it. Forgot forgot to do my family pictures with all me and my kids wearing tracksuits. Yeah. Like real Italians. That. Yeah, I might steal it. Um, what's it called? So, all right. So. Let's fast forward a little bit. So I, I did like um, – you had work ethic. I could tell. Every, but we all have that kind of lazy vibe at us because that's why you do stand up a little bit. It's because you don't really want to do real work. Uh, but you were like a physical therapist, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you got to go to <laughs> – you got a lot of school to do to do that. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I always kind of gravitated towards the people that had some kind of uh, some kind of grit or some kind of work ethic. Vocation. Yeah, because I was I was working at a mutual fund company in LA. It was the first job I had. 
my my former boss won the Nobel Prize for economics in 2015. Oh my god! Again with this guy. <laughs> the passive ah, no the Nobel passive Prize. investing theory. Jeez. What up, Eugene Fama? Um, a little little Lebowski urban achiever. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but you you were a hard worker, uh, and you were just living in Florida near us in Orlando, um, mm-hmm. and I was I was tickled pink that you had been. Tell us about the wrestling side of you. What like. You're an announcer for I, I forget the uh, the league, but um, it's right underneath the WWE. I don't know the wrestling world. I just well, no in Florida. In Florida, I was with. That's why I was in Florida with WWE. Okay, yeah. so tell us about that journey. That's I guess. Cool. Oh man, so yeah, started stand up was like the first thing uh, entertainment related, and you know, still working as a physical therapist the whole way through. And after like a year or two in stand up, kind of around the time we met, I was like, well, I'm I'm either gonna make a career out of this or I'm just going to quit. Cause I don't, I didn't want to half ass it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so when you and I met, I was kind of just like diving in, trying to get up as much as possible. Almost every night of the week, I was single. I had nothing else to do. Like, yes, I had work, but otherwise it's like, I'm not the kind of person that I've never been the sit at home and watch TV guy. So yeah. I just wanted to go out and do that. And then, you know, you just do stand up. Then I kind of fell into hosting on camera. Uh, got a chance where I, I won this little comedy competition that got me a hosting job. So I learned how to read teleprompter on the job, started doing hosting work. And, and this is back like over 10 years ago before all the hosting jobs went to TikTokers and celebrities. Like you could actually be a regular yeah. person and yeah. host jobs if you're talented. You know what I mean? Right. So I'm doing that. One day I'm on this hosting job and I'm talking to the camera guy. We just start talking about wrestling. I don't know how it happened. And he loved wrestling. I love wrestling, whatever. A couple of weeks later, I get a phone call from this guy, David Marquez. He said, Hey, uh, so-and-so told me about you. I'm starting a wrestling television show here in LA. I need someone to do interviews. I think you'd be a great fit. So I came in, uh, we had a meeting at a Starbucks in the Valley. He said, this is what I need you for. He's like, I can't promise it's going to lead to anything, but it, you know, if you want a job in wrestling, here it is. And I said, yeah, I was going to say yes. By the way, no that, what you that coffee meetup you do for these random things like this almost never come to fruition. I feel like I had, I had a handful of those and I'm like, yeah, I'll meet you at CPK. <laughs> I'll meet you at California <laughs> Pizza Kitchen to talk about like whatever you need a mumbly voiceover or something like that. And then, like my my record was oh for fifty or whatever of those kind of meetings. But yeah, yeah. Well, this one was legit. It's it started uh, on KDOC and it's been airing. It's it's it initially was affiliated with the NWA. Now it's its own brand. It's the United Wrestling Network. It's Championship Wrestling. And I was with the company essentially for almost nine years, over four hundred episodes. I did everything from interviews to in-ring stuff um, and then started doing play-by-play and color commentary over the years. And it just got to the point where, you know, over the years, yeah, WWE was my dream, but I had no idea how to get there because I'm all the way in California. And Mm -hmm. the way it works in wrestling, the West Coast is kind of neglected, in my opinion, in the the wrestling world. Most, Most of the wrestling shows are in the South, in the East, in the Northeast, and what, so for me, Steve it, Kern's, uh, his wrestling school down here that a lot of those guys go through. Oh, I knew Tampa Steve Kern. kind of like I'm, a wrestling. It was mecca, re- wrestling, like, and, wrestling, of- and, wrestling and boxing were huge and it was not the Mecca, but it was definitely the big hub or this is the- where oh, yeah. they all come to die from steroids. Well, I mean, Florida has got so many and Steve Kern's a legend in his own right. Well, yeah, I, went, I went to school with his son, Corey, uh, oh, Do- nice. Doink the clown, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, Steve Kern was actually uh, people would know him as Skinner when he was with WWE. Totally, Prince Doink the Clown Principal was uh, Matt Bourne. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Doink, Doink the Clown was Matt Bourne, different guy, but whatever. Oh no, um, shit! What really? I thought yeah. I thought he was Doink. We I thought the, I, oh, we called him Doink life, in high was. school. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Doink the Clown was a guy named. I mean, there were a couple different Doinks, but the original Doink the Clown was a guy named Matt Bourne. Yeah. Fucking mm-hmm. wow! We don't really yeah. unearth a lot of things on this show, but you heard it here first. <laughs> wow! Doop, doop, doop. Yeah, no, but uh, Steve Kern, man, if you go back and watch his Skinner promos, he would legit be in like louisiana style waters and like come up out of the water with a knife in his mouth and <laughs> oh i love i love a good wrestling promo oh, oh there were probably yeah. alligators around him like kern was such a badass for this character like you talk about commitment that was what he did you know so uh yes over the years you make relationships people get jobs with wwe and it's all about timing and a, a position came open from what i understand 
Uh, one of the managers slash commentators reached out to me. I sent my stuff. They realized, oh, this guy has done everything with a microphone in wrestling. And so even though WWE hasn't since changed from the pandemic, they are now trying to hire people from other backgrounds and then training them their way, which is whatever. That's their prerogative. They knew I could like be like diversity uh, hire stuff or like not so much that. No, like um, since I since I left or dinks, less doinks. Oh, wow. Yeah, like yeah. They, they, um, That's the HR slogan. <laughs> they brought in, you know, uh, people from like uh, what would be the football world or the soccer world. Oh, or gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Stuff like that. Because it seems so like they, if you watch ESPN, like they just cycle through all these retired guys and then you can see like. I'm a dork and watch NFL live almost every day. And you can see like guys that are about to retire. They're giving them a tryout for a week to oh, see if they're right. good kind of thing. Yeah. That's um, painful sometimes. It's, some are amazing. It's, yeah. Some are good. Some are bad. Uh, most are most bad. Most are bad. Most are really bad because they freeze up. You remember uh, Emmett Smith? Well, they don't have the reps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Emmett. He was all time worse. It, well, the, the good ones end up doing radio as well. Like if, right. if you can be killer on a radio show, like Bart, Bart Scott is like one of my favorites. He's, he's crusher. Like he's so good and he could do anything, you know, he's got opinions. Um, that's, that's the thing that makes him different. He actually right. sits and thinks like a comic and writes stuff down. And like, yes. goes, I'm going to, this is the slant where the other guy's just like, I don't know. I'm just me. I'll just go in there and be. Yeah. Hey, and know. then there's Tony Romo. Who's got a childlike joy for what he does. Like he's having the best time of anyone watching the game. And that, that translates it's Eric's you know, favorite so. announcer. Yeah. We have, it's a whole thing. I think he's uh, the best. He's, he's so smarmy. Just he's, I love that. I love the smarm. I called the play. I knew what they were going to do. Yeah, he called the play. That's amazing. He's like, look, this what trips. Yo. It's trips right. They're going to hit Tyreek Hill over in this curl route right here. He's going to set in a 15, 15 no, yard great. curl. I mean, that's fantastic, but he has a whole week to watch them practice and know exactly what they're going to do. It's not, then I mean, why wouldn't anybody else do that? Why wasn't he doing that on the field? If he knew what play they were going to run every time he did, he called the play. His back the wouldn't let it. <laughs> right. He had a, uh, right, we got a couple of Romo apologists, a lot of back answer. issues, but uh, anyways, yeah. So they, they knew I could be a utility guy. So they brought me in and over the course of the, the time I was there, I did every possible job with a microphone and a headset. Uh, there so that's and then since then i've transitioned to doing still in wrestling but also mma and boxing and so aside from stand-up and healthcare, also doing now uh you know combat sports and pretty much anything i else i'm hired for so, so uh if people want to hire him they can um yeah. yeah i want can you throw eric your your moving that week you were telling me you were moving you were doing a yep. show here in town and i was like i got i started like getting sweats like thinking about you having to do it, it wasn't even me, but you were like, okay, so after this show, I gotta go have a search soda, and then we gotta move everything out and it's going to Orange County. Then we gotta go to Orlando. It was some crazy shit. Can you oh, walk, walk me through that week? And I guess you made it. You're- yeah. So Ooh, Sarasota. Show- no, not Sarasota. The show we did together was uh, in Tampa on a Wednesday. I had to fly to Richmond, Virginia the next day to do three nights of shows, flew back to Tampa on a Sunday. And basically, we had to get ready to move a couple days later. So yeah, that's pretty much. That, no, that, no, did you? Have, there was way there was way more to this story. You're, Easy peasy. Were you living in Orlando? You had a girlfriend in Sarasota or some shit like that. that Tampa, that? yeah, yeah. So I finished uh, up in Orlando. I got out of my place uh, two days before we did our show together. Yeah. And then at that point, I was going to be in Tampa until we moved, moved. And so yeah, it was just a lot of uh, a lot of prep. But at the same time, it's like I had a weekend booked at this comedy club. I don't want to say no to work. So right. You had to move two houses in in like uh, a seven day span with a gig in between or something like that. I was just like, yeah, that's insane. Um, So tell tell us about the uh, physical therapy, Quasto Special dot com, Q U A S T O Special dot com. Physical therapy. Mm -hmm. There you go. So I want to hear about this process of uh, recording this. You you do it on your own. Yeah, every cent. Yeah. what is if I'm I'm going to do this for my own selfish reasons? If I'm going to do one, what is the advice you would give? Um, I just want to film something. I just want to do like a thirty minute guy and just put yeah. it up. Uh, Dude, it, it, the it's sad not thing that is, hard. well, the sad thing is we know the digital advertising space, so it's kind of like that thing of like you get it up. We know how to get stuff out there for other people. For this show, we this we haven't done it yet. Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> the, and by the way, 
I, is that the living color cast in your bottom left hand sure. frame? It sure is. Yes. If you just want to challenge my fighter pilot uh, vision, pretty there. good, pretty good eyes. I mean, you know, I think you're being a little bit racist based on Jim Carrey top the left diversity of it. Like I see races of people. There's about it's, eight. It's people. the original cast from season one. Boom. Right next to it, I have. Uh, the Barkley versus Godzilla poster, followed by Weird Al from UHF. But no, in Living Color is my favorite show of all time, and it's the whole. If it wasn't for a Living Color, I don't think I ever would have tried stand up. Your That's office is like a thirteen-year-old's room. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm still tinkering with it because we just, you know, I'm, but I'm I'm moving stuff around and whatnot, and it's uh, it's it's looking all right. No, um, all right. So if I if I if, if I'm I'm to film something, or there is yeah. a comic that wants to film their own thing, or maybe. There's a motivational speaker listening to this that's trying to uh, hoodwink a lot of people out of money, and they mm-hmm. want to film something. What what advice would you give about that? Because I, I'm the best thing I've heard is Joe Coy talking about microphones, and you need get as many mics scattered throughout as you can. Hell yes! Is that a, was that an issue? No, not with my special. I mean, if you watch it, the crowd was mic'd up perfectly but we were like really painstakingly uh on top of everything but i mean you can honestly even in the three and a half years since i filmed my special you can gosh you can do it so much easier now than you have you see comics releasing specials on youtube where it's just them at a comedy club with a couple of cameras kind of like gorilla style almost but it's good audio that's the most important thing good audio good video and boom you put it out on youtube and I kind of understand why comics are doing it on YouTube now because a lot, not everyone can be on Netflix and there's really successful comics that get turned down by Netflix. They're like, all right, I'm going to go the YouTube route. I didn't go that route because I, I filmed every, you know, I, I had my whole team. We put it all together. We edited the whole thing. I went with a distribution company and you know, they were able to get it on Roku and on Tubi. It was featured on Roku, Sling TV, Zumo. And that's, that's what we got so far. But the financial return from that was way lower than I ever would have anticipated. Yeah. Not to say people didn't watch, but it's free and it's ad revenue. So it's like you got to watch the two ad breaks, whatever. Oof. But like in hindsight, and you, get a cut, known, do you get a cut of the ad revenue, just a percentage of that ad revenue, right? Yeah. We had a 60 40 deal, where, which is uh, I keep 60, they get 40. And so in hindsight, if I would have known, I think there's a deal in my contract where. I think I have to wait 10 years to put it on YouTube, but honestly, I might bring it up to the But you get it back. Because... That's nice. At least you can yes. buy it back. Because yeah, I was just looking that. at Schultz has a new special. I guess it was I presumably was going to go on Netflix. They wanted him to cut some stuff out. He bought it back and is putting it on YouTube. And I was like, wow, that's really interesting. Because I think he says like I had to pay use all my life savings to buy it back or something like that. Um, so he can put it out there. Well, he's got, he's got the built in audience. Yeah, at exactly. this point. Right. If anybody, he's, but he the is the first one to do it, that but way. he is the guy to look at as I'm trying to figure out what he did and a bunch of other guys to get, to get their audience built up. You know, he's I mean, like the it, pioneer of, in one way. Yeah. It definitely helps to have a built in following like his co-host, uh, cash Singh, just put out, um, a 20 minute special, maybe two months ago. Yeah. And it was phenomenal. It was just him doing a couple different bits. And I think a few different comedy clubs because I, he, you know, different, it was almost like different scenes and he mashed it up into a 20 minute set. And from what I understand, it's, it's just killing it and it should because it's funny, but like, that was a simple way of doing it. And with Schultz, he knows his following. Like you see some of these comics, their specials are getting millions of views and you guys might know better than me. From what I understand with YouTube, the longer, the content is the more likelihood they're going to show it to people because it's professional. It's in HD. It looks good. And so in hindsight, if I would have known the financial return, like I'm still proud of the fact that I can say it's on Roku, it's on Tubi. Like that's cool. Right. But I think way more eyes would have gotten on it if it was just a a strict straight up YouTube release. Yeah. You you know, you you went on, you you segmented it out, but it it was three years ago is a lot. A lot has changed, especially in the comedy world, but uh, YouTube does incentivize everybody to stay there. So, like our kids, my son's now getting into those fucking kids that play video games. Right, shit. right. Those right, videos right, right, of right. kids playing endless hours of video games, and I'm like, I'm trying to like see if I can knock it out of them because I know his son's addicted to it. 
I, but it's all about attention span. Can I keep them there instead of jumping over from YouTube to Netflix or, or Disney Plus or whatever, right? Uh, same with comedy, but I heard the number with Netflix. They said like 28 minutes is about where a, the big majority of the crowd, if they bow out, is right there. Right. I so think that, anything which, over that, I don't I, – in terms of – in. In, in terms of like SEO of it, I don't know if length of it necessarily matters, but in terms of engagement with the audience itself, there is they definitely have that that data or right. whatever twenty eight minutes. I don't know if Which, it matters how long it and is. And that that's the that's the secondary part of it. You get to know all the stats right there. If you wanted to check in on what you put on YouTube, you can check it every day if you want. Whereas, and I know Netflix is, is super analytical. Like that would explain why they do the 15 minute specials and the 30 minute specials primarily. They'll get, they'll do the full specials for the well-known people. But I remember, um, <clears throat> so I filmed it in late 2018. It didn't actually come out until about a year ago. Uh -huh. And so Oof. I remember talked, I talked to a friend of mine at Netflix at the time and I sent my special to him and he said, I have, I have like a four minute and 20 second opening sketch that kind of like, tells people who I am. Because my thought process is if people watch this, they're not going to know me. I've never been a big fan of the comedy specials where it's like, please welcome. And they jump on stage and they tell their jokes and they leave. I wanted variety. I wanted this to be like an hour for someone to sit down and be like, that dude can do a lot more than stand up. So that's why I put all the effort in. You wanted to showcase a little bit. Exactly. And my friend who, who worked there said, well, if Netflix wanted it, they would make you get rid of this entire first sketch because their analytics show that if a comic is not hitting the microphone in the first 25 seconds, people will tune out. And I yeah. was like, well, I don't want that audience, but I <laughs> appreciate the I want the I want the audience from 1993, the living color yeah, right. <laughs> audience. But if they don't know you, you know, it's and I, I'm going to watch stand-up comedy. Boop, put it on, and like, how long is this going to be? Well, that, I mean, and then they do the fast-forward thing, and they say, uh, fuck this. That's Fort kind of what we all grew that's up That's what on. a lot is, of what's happening. No, I know. I remember all that. Everybody had an intro. Like, they had an opening thing that they did. Like, to, for them to just come out, you didn't put in the microphone? I love that. And for me, it's like, I didn't, going into this, I didn't care what the end game was going to be. I, I wanted to make a special that 30 years down the road, I could look back and be like, that was really cool and yeah that's that's what i did it's same thing with my previous album it was a whole concept album from start to finish it wasn't just stand-up and with the special i wanted to do the same thing it's got an opening sketch it's got uh a couple of fake commercials where like the special cuts the commercial and then it's got a completely insane ending and i'm really proud of how it was because i think it was unlike any other special in recent memory is you know we'll see who ends up how many people end up watching it but Oops. I know it's something that I'm proud of and that I can move on and say, you know what, I'm, I'm really happy with it. That's the key. You're proud of it. Yeah, yeah. I, that, that's a lot of the inertia for me to do something because I've been doing stand-up a long time. I don't have a thing. I don't have anything to just go, here's, here's, here's a special or here's, a, like, uh, here's something commoditized at some point. You know, here's something I can tangibly go, like, here you go, check this out. Um, I guess it would be intangible too, but – um, what I would say, if I'm you, I'd make a, I'd blow in a call and see and just every, every three months or so, just see if you can buy it back for nothing on the dollar or like, whatever. You don't still want that, do you? That old <laughs> special one. I think it's just laying around. And then, you try, and then chop up, chop it up, have it, have it full length premiere on it, but also chop up each of those parts and put it out there too. Or maybe well, remix it, throw a little bit extra in there. Mm hmm What's weird is the reason it apparently that it's not on Amazon is I guess Amazon at some point, I think it was around election time. Amazon, I guess, did a very, very poor job of policing who put content on there. Yep. And I guess a lot of like blatantly insane conspiracy shit got on Amazon right yeah. around election time. Yeah. I didn't so, know that. That's fun. Yeah. They, they tried to make it almost user uh, enabled like YouTube to get their stuff on the platform. Yeah. And then was like, and that's why oh, wait a, minute. a lot of, <laughs> a lot of people can say, Oh, you can watch my shit on Amazon. Yeah. Cause they're paying to put it on Amazon. Like it may be garbage, but it's there. So I guess at one point, Amazon got rid of all what they consider unscripted content. So they, they grouped documentaries and comedy specials in together. Yes. And so I, I did hear this. Yeah. Yeah. And so there the distribution go. company was like, sorry, we can't get it on Amazon right now. We're trying. And I was like, you have to get this on Amazon. It's a comedy special and it's one of the biggest, you know, things out there for people to watch. And so I'm still, I'm still waiting. If it doesn't happen soon, I don't know. I might just ask like, Hey, do I have the, 
freedom to put this on YouTube because clearly I don't I don't think any more money's coming in. I want people to see this. How about how about a very uncouth idea? Uh, and I've heard this uh, talk to Bert about this. Bert Kreischer. He, um, he, his, uh, you know, Russian mafia story went berserk on YouTube. Oh yeah. Um, and, or really Facebook first than YouTube. Um, but the thing that helped him a lot more that it was ripped, put on the different YouTubes of different countries too. So, mm. so like, uh, oh, so. so all these people were ripping it and his management was like, we'll, we'll, We'll tell them, we'll get it taken down. He's like, no, 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 this is great. Keep it up. You know how to work a, a VPN? Yeah, so put, <laughs> so putting it out there, I'm just saying this is an uncouth way to go about it, but maybe you could be big in Finland and go over there. But uh, all the English-speaking countries, had they had their they have their own YouTube by country, right? And then everybody's ripped it and put it up there, and he got a lot of following that way too. Wow. That's uh, that's great foresight on his end to be like, no, 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 don't do anything. Let the people watch the bits. Like that's the most important. right, and that's that's where comics because like nowadays, you you guys see it. Comedy clubs are booking TikTokers and like viral celebrities who don't even do stand up, and people are buying tickets. They are selling out clubs because people just want to see these people make an appearance. And whether they're drinking wine and doing a PowerPoint, they don't give a damn. So like as a comic, the more views you get on your stuff, that's like truly the best way to get people to want to come see you. Well, that, I mean, that's Ralphie May's theory. Hey, man, uh, that's like if a pig fucker was on stage and sold out 11 shows in a week, guess who's going to headline the comedy club? A guy fucking yeah. a pig. And you're like, and I can't really blame the clubs either. It's no. like the clubs need to make money. Now, granted, comedy clubs don't promote like they used to, and that's, that's on them. But at, at some point, it's like, yeah, if you have an act that's going to sell 300 plus tickets on a Sunday at 7 p.m., you're going to book them, even if it's not traditional stand-up, even if it's not good. <laughs> yeah. Look, I, I think about the model. It's, it's a really flawed model because it's not multi-purpose. Because like you, you, could, you got seven shots a week to make your nut, right? So, And if someone comes in for the full weekend, it just it doesn't pull people. I always think like you should make a comedy club. If you made it from scratch, you should make it multi-purpose. It should be a music club during the day. You can use it as a meeting hall, uh, kind of modular. So you get the most utility out of the spot. That's the problem with the club model is you're basically a bar. Yeah, but you won't have that crusty club feel. Oh, you want it. that? Yeah. Well, that's why you know when to laugh. <laughs> you want that old carpet smell? Right. Mm. You know not to take things seriously. They don't take cleaning the floor seriously. I'm not going to take uh, my life too seriously. Okay. That's how okay. comedy We can make it modular and kind of grimy. so you guys know. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. We ask everybody that comes on the pod this question the first time. Eric hates the question, but I'm going to keep Damn doing it. it. I forgot to come up with a new one. He forgot to come up with a new one. Um, what if, what advice would you give your 13 year old self? Uh, you can travel eat less tartar sauce. Well, pff, Jesus Christ! So quick. I was gonna so quick with that. He's answer. very quick. Uh, what happened with the tartar sauce? Yeah. I was a fat, fat child, and I <laughs> from uh, tartar sauce. Well, that was a in, big part of it in Pennsylvania. It wasn't yeah. like you're eating like you know a lot of things. Where in Pennsylvania? Go- where you it went in Philly? Uh, I grew up in like an hour north. Where? Where an hour north? He's got family there. I got family uh, out there. We're going oh, to the, Penn, the we're going to the Auburn Penn State game this year. That's going to happen. Okay. Oh, okay. And wait, I grew up in the Lehigh Valley, Valley, Northampton, to be exact. Oh wait. Uh, okay. Oh wait. It's in near Allentown. I lived in Allentown when growing up. You did? Yeah. When? Okay. Yeah, I thought man. you grew up here. Amish country, dude. Yeah. It's Sweet. Weird. <laughs> Yeah, man. When did, when did you live in Allentown? When I was a little kid. I was like three or four. Huh. I knew you had Pennsylvania My sister was roots. born there. Oh, shit. Okay. There you go. Boom. How about that? Yeah. So, yeah, less tartar <laughs> sauce, uh, less dessert. Um, those That would be – but as far as career advice as a 13-year-old? It's whatever you want. Tartar sauce plays. But if you have something else, you can, you can travel back in time, grab yourself by the lapels, pull your oh, fat man. little chubby face to your face now. I would okay, yeah, yeah. I would say if, if I could give advice to my 13 year old self, I would have said, uh, "Hey, that thing you like doing, um, start doing it earlier." Like basically, like I always loved comedy. Like I, I, I wrote a movie. Script I really thought that was a jerking off. I thought setup. jerking off for sure. No. <laughs> 
By 13, I was already a professional. Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought you were like, more? do it by 10. <laughs> yeah. No, no, more. no. You were wasting your golden years. Yeah. <laughs> like, I wrote like a, a, I remember right, I wrote a movie script when I was in college, but like, I wish I would have, I had the urge to try stand up and like, you know, so I wish I would have, uh, I wish I would have considered doing, like, I, you know, I started stand up at 24. So it's not like I started super late. Mm. I just, you know, I wish I would have, um, when it jumped into that even sooner. And, uh, and I would say, I also wish I would have focused on the broadcasting side of things a lot earlier. Like it's one of those things I didn't know. I truly didn't realize like the talent I had for it until way too, not way too late. Cause things are going great. But I think I wish I would have uh, jumped into that part of it a lot sooner, like uh, trying to figure out how to, to work in wrestling first. And then it could have led to other things, but Luckily, I've been able to make up for a lot of lost time the last, you know, couple of years. So. Yeah, you get a lot of horseshit people that are like, if you got a plan B, you're not going to make it in stand up. I'm like, fuck you, dude. Right. Like, there, everybody has a side gig eventually in stand up. You do stand up, and then it's like you're going to branch out into something else too. That's r- probably comedy related. So it's always like, I never really liked that, uh, but I also I get the perspective of don't spread yourself too thin, kind of thing. Yeah. Dude, have you ever uh, tried a Jim Rome impression? I feel like you could Ooh. totally pull off a killer. That's Jim the Rome. goatee you've got. I do the uh, I do the EA Sports guy really well. Um, Jim Rome, I'd have to listen to, but I know he has because the thing with Jim Rome, he's got those odd pauses. You yeah, know what I mean, right. like his pauses make no sense. Where he's like, I don't know, give me give me a topic, I'll just try to wing it. Uh, who should I talk about? Or sport? Carmelo so, Anthony. Like, all right, Carmelo Anthony, good shooter, old now. What's he going to do? Go to the Lakers, team up with LeBron again. Guess where it led them? 32 and 50. Don't think it's time for Carmelo to come back. I think I th- that's not the first time you did Jim. Rome. I think you no got, way. it's got legs, dude. I think you got to get a green but screen. I was saying it because the look is there. Like you throw a suit on, dude. You can walk Wait. in throwing his name around like it matters. I don't know. Yeah, What's the video where he, call, he calls the guy whatever Chrissy or whatever? Oh, uh, Jim Everett. Yeah. Jim Everett. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. That uh, was way back. We're talking almost yeah. 30 years ago now. Yeah. That's a legendary video, though. Uh, I think you got to get a green screen and maybe do a fake Jim Rome show. Bro, yeah. I got a six footer green screen just off to the right of me. Humble so. brag. <laughs> <laughs> well. All right, dude. Well, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Quasto special. You know, maybe go check it out. Uh, QuastoSpecial.com. We'll put it in the. The description. Maybe rip it. Put it yeah, in your off Europe camera. Somewhere. I want to get your guys' advice on how to get this damn thing out to more people. Because Jesus, um, right, yeah. email list be number one. Mm, Set well, off done that. camera. I look. It, this this shows to now help the people that fun. listen to it too. Export yeah. all, everybody you've ever emailed ever. Put it in uh, Excel. Put it in a uh, Mailchimp. Put it out there. Make a campaign out of yeah. it. Yeah. I pay a, a stupid amount to MailChimp every month, mostly for nothing. So, yeah, I should start. You should that. utilize that. It's still the number one. Well, yeah. I, I mean, for relationship marketing, still number one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair I'll, I'll, I'll give you a ring, buddy. All right, I like man. It. Appreciate it. Thank dude. you, boys. See ya. Thank you.